goalball is similar to 10 pin bowling but with humans it basically involves a court the size of a volleyball court so 18 meters in length and 9 meters in width the catch is that the ball has bells in it and all of the players are blindfolded and they use their bodies to try and block the ball I find goalball a really great opportunity because of the inclusivity it involves. Through wearing a blindfold, everybody is placed in the same level. We have people who play goalball who are fully sighted, including my brother and some of my friends. Overall, it's an awesome opportunity to see the capabilities of people who have low vision in sport. Because if it comes to things like soccer or tennis, our capacities are a lot lower because we can't see the pool or see sometimes even the other players. So having goalball is a great opportunity to have some fun and to be competitive in sport and to get fit as a vision impaired person. I like, I like singing, I like playing piano, keyboard, just music in general, playing music, creating music, listening to music. These hobbies make me feel so happy and relaxed and I usually resort to these hobbies when I'm stressed or in the middle of something that's just really heavy so I can just use these just to chill, relax, calm down. My name is Amy Ridley and I'm 17 years old. Hi guys, my name is Nathra Rahman, I am 17 years old and I have the most common form of dwarfism. Having a disability and the word itself basically lends itself to a lack of ability and in my opinion the biggest thing that makes us lack ability is not actually the physical or cognitive condition we have but the perceptions and perspectives of the society around us. So what what kind of things do people do that sometimes annoy me or sometimes that I don't really like? So... How many fingers am I holding up? Question. One of the fun facts about this question is literally everybody who ever does it is holding up two fingers. So even if you are blind, you can probably say two and be right. Sometimes some adults they look and they stare. It's a little awkward because I'm just like... It's just... To us, it feels like you're questioning whether we're telling the truth or not and you're testing us. But really, we've had a lot of vision tests in our lives and we know how much we can see. So I don't think that in any way asking someone that question is actually looking to gain any understanding from you. It's more of a habit and a critique for us. How are people with dwarfism with vision impairment depicted in the media? I think it is we, we as people with dwarfism are represented in a very wide range of ways. I think that this just comes down to the normalisation that is in media and in literature about what's what, what's normal and the things that we depict. Sinead Burke, she is an Irish public speaker and she has just come into the media recently, maybe like last year or the year before, for her TED talk about people with disabilities <clears throat> And she is an extremely inspirational woman. She is, she's such a strong advocate for, for equality, not just with people with dwarfism, but just with anyone and everyone with disabilities in general. And there's been a push to change this in recent years when we looked at um, gender and its presence in movies and TV shows or different races and religions, but when it comes to disabilities, there's not many advocates who are pushing for equal representation, or not necessarily equal representation, but a better representation of what the presence of disability in our society 